Hello everyone, today's topic is on posterior triangle of the neck. Posterior triangle, it is a triangular space on the side of the neck behind sternocleidomastoid muscle. So here is the side of the neck where all superficial structures are removed like skin, superficial fascia and its contents, deep fascia all are removed to show the muscles forming the boundaries of posterior triangle. So this one is sternocleidomastoid muscle. So we can see the sternocleidomastoid obliquely running from sternum and clavicle towards the mastoid process. This is the mastoid process. So this triangle it is anteriorly bonded by sternocleidomastoid and it is apex is directed upwards, backwards towards the mastoid process. So here is the apex and base is downwards towards the clavicle. So let's talk about the boundaries of posterior triangle. Anteriorly it is bounded by posterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So we can see here anteriorly it is formed by the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid and posteriorly it is by the trapezius muscle. So the most superficial muscle on back of the neck is the trapezius muscle. So posteriorly anterior border of trapezius bounds the posterior triangle and inferiorly that is the base is formed by the superior aspect of middle third of the clavicle. So the clavicle we can divide into three parts. This is first one third, this is middle one third and here is the lateral one third. So only the middle one third of the clavicle takes part in the formation of base and superior, superior is formed by the apex and apex is formed by meeting point of sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscles at the superior nuchal line of occipital bone. So here we can see a line which gives origin to muscles. This is the superior nuchal line. So along with the superior nuchal line, we can see the meeting point of sternocleidomastoid and trapezius forming the apex of posterior triangle of neck. So that was about the boundaries. Next we shall move with the roof. A uh, roof it is formed by the investing layer of deep cervical fascia which is stretching between the sternocleidomastoid and trapezius muscle. So here we can see a white colored structure which is pierced by several cutaneous nerves which is nothing but deep cervical fascia. It stretches between sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. This is sternocleidomastoid muscle and we can see the trapezius as well. So the superficial fascia overlying the roof contains a muscle called as platysma. So what you are seeing here is the deep fascia. So superficial to the deep fascia is superficial fascia. So here in this image we can see the muscle called platysma which is a facial muscles of facial expression present in the neck and uh, which lies within the superficial fascia and we can see the platysma covers partially the posterior triangle. It forms a part of posterior triangle of neck. Let's talk about the structures piercing the roof of posterior triangle. So first we shall see the external jugular vein. External jugular vein we can see it pierces the deep fascia to, come super, to become superficial and it begins just below the angle of mandible. So here is the angle of mandible, we can see in the other image, external jugular vein is here and uh, it begins just below the angle of mandible and it runs downwards 
and little posteriorly that is backwards crossing the sternocleidomastoid obliquely under the cover of platysma. So we can see crosses sternocleidomastoid muscle and we can see finally it drains down into subclavian vein. So below it drains into subclavian vein. Let us see the cutaneous branches which pierces the deep fascia of uh, posterior triangle. So the four cutaneous branches of cervical plexus are lesser occipital nerve. Here is the lesser occipital nerve. So lesser occipital nerve is uh, as we know they are all the branches of cervical plexus. It bears the root value as C2. And next is the greater auricular nerve, greater auricular nerve is this one. The root value of greater auricular nerve is C2C3. Next is the transverse cervical nerve. So lesser occipital, greater auricular, they are ascending upwards, transverse cervical nerve runs transversely in the neck. So transverse cervical nerve has the root value as again C2, C3, same as greater auricular nerve and we can see the nerves which are descending down towards the clavicle, they are called as supraclavicular nerves. So all these are supraclavicular nerves which are descending downwards. Supraclavicular nerves bears the root value as C3, C4. So these are the cutaneous nerves which pierce the roof of the posterior triangle. So all these nerves, if you see, they uh, pierce the uh, almost near the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid. So somewhere in the middle of the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, at this point we can see most of the cutaneous nerves, they pierce the roof and become superficial. So that was about the roof and contents of roof. Next we shall move with the floor of posterior triangle. So the floor of posterior triangle is muscular and it is uh, formed from above downwards as semispinalis capitis, splenius capitis, levator scapulae and scalenus medius. So I will show. So this is splenius capitis. Next one is the levator scapulae, the obliquely running muscle towards the scapula is levator scapulae. And the fourth muscle is scalenus medius. semispinalis capitis it is usually not that well appreciated in the posterior triangle. It is partially seen in some and it is well appreciated from posterior view of the neck. So here we can see semispinalis capitis. So this is the posterior view of the neck where the superficial muscle this side is the trapezius. And here is the levator scapulae. So after removing the trapezius the other side is shown. So this is levator scapulae. 
and we can see the cut part of trapezius as well and here is the semispinalis capitis which is a little part of it may be appreciated in the posterior triangle as the floor of posterior triangle. The muscular floor of posterior triangle is covered by a layer of deep cervical fascia which is called as prevertebral layer. So here in this image we can see after removing the contents and superficial fascia the prevertebral layer is present which is like a facial carpet uh, which covers all the structures forming the floor of a posterior triangle and this prevertebral layer of deep cervical fascia uh, it forms a sheath that is the axillary sheath around the subclavian artery and brachial plexus and uh, traveling from the root of the neck to the upper lip. So that was about the prevertebral fascia which also takes part in the formation of floor. And posterior triangle it is further divided into two triangles because the lower part of the posterior triangle it is crossed by a muscle called as inferior belly of omohyoid. So here we know, so we can see the sternocleidomastoid, this side is the trapezius and we can see the muscles forming the floor that is uh, splenius capitis, splenius capitis, levator scapulae, scalenus medius muscle and all and this muscle which is crossing here dividing the posterior triangles into two more triangles this one is called as inferior belly of omohyoid. So that was about the division of the triangles. So the prevertebral layer which was I am saying earlier which forms the floor of uh, posterior triangle which forms like a deep facial carpet over the structures forming the floor of posterior triangle. So the pus collected in the posterior triangle deep to its uh, facial carpet forms a trabecular cervical vertebra may track downwards. So the pus will track downwards. Uh, uh, toward downwards and laterally uh, towards the axillary sheath because we said the prevertebral fascia continues as the axillary sheath towards the upper limb uh, covering the subclavian vessels and brachial plexus. So th this uh, pus it drains towards the axillary sheath along the axillary sheath uh, to the first uh, uh, they appear in the axilla the pus will be seen in the axilla and or even in the arm subsequently it drains downwards into the uh, upper part of the arm. So that was about one clinical aspect which is associated with the prevertebral fascia. So next about the divisions I already said the inferior belly of omohyoid divides the posterior triangle into large upper part called as occipital triangle. So this large upper triangle is the So large upper occipital triangle and a small part which is below the inferior belly of omohyoid is called as supraclavicular triangle or subclavian triangle. Let's see the contents of each triangle further. So in the occipital triangle, so the first content is uh, spinal accessory nerve in the occipital triangle. So in the occipital triangle, the, uh, that is a triangle which is above the omohyoid, superior belly of omohyoid, uh, uh, the major content is spinal accessory nerve. Spinal accessory nerve is the 11th cranial nerve. It meant to st supply sternocleidomastoid and trapezius. So we can see the spinal accessory nerve supplying the uh, sternocleidomastoid and trapezius as well. The next is the third and fourth cervical nerves uh, which provides branches to levator scapulae and trapezius. So trapezius has got dual nerve supply. It is supplied by spinal accessory nerve and also from the cervical nerves from C3-C4. 
So third nerve is the dorsal scapular nerve. The root value of dorsal scapular nerve is C5 which is a branch of brachial plexus and dorsal scapular nerve is well appreciated in the posterior triangle of neck and it is meant to supply uh, dorsal scapular muscles that is supraspinatus and infraspinatus muscles. Next about uh, four cutaneous branches. Cutaneous branches we saw in the beginning of the session where they pierce the superficial fascia. So these uh, four cutaneous branches they are all the branches of cervical plexus with the root value of from C2 to C4 and C5 as well. And superficial transverse cervical artery, superficial transverse cervical artery it, along with the cervical veins is also seen as a content. And lastly the occipital artery, occipital artery is a branch of external carotid artery. So it is also forms a content of posterior triangle of neck. So these are the uh, contents of occipital triangle of posterior triangle of neck. So occipital triangle is considered to be a carefree triangle because uh, no very major structures are not present in the occipital triangle. So next is about the subclavian triangle or supraclavicular triangle uh, that is the triangle below the inferior belly of homohyoid and uh, it corresponds to supraclavicular fossa. So here in this image we can see the sternocleidomastoid is removed and we can see the cut parts of sternocleidomastoid. This is the proximal attachment which is cut and removed. And we can see the cut part of inferior belly of homohyoid as well. So exposing the contents of uh, subclavian triangle. So subclavian triangle corresponds to supraclavicular fossa and floor contains the first rib scalenus medius and first slip of serratus anterior muscle. So the floor is not well appreciated but we can see the contents here. The contents are third part of subclavian artery and also accompanying subclavian vein. So we can see the subclavian artery, third part of subclavian artery. And along with it is subclavian vein. And also the terminal part of external jugular vein. External jugular vein terminates into subclavian vein. So we can see the cut end of external jugular vein which is terminating into subclavian vein. And trunks of brachial plexus. And uh, superficial cervical transverse uh, cutaneous nerves and also the superficial cervical or transverse uh, arteries, suprascapular arteries and dorsal scapular arteries are also contents of a uh, subclavian triangle. Next and most importantly the lymph nodes which are called as supraclavicular lymph nodes. We can see these green colored structures here which are present in the supraclavicular triangle or subclavian triangle. So these are the contents. So the most important contents of posterior triangle are third part of subclavian artery, brachial plexus, spinal accessory nerve and lymph nodes on the whole and all the important contents of posterior triangle lie deep to a facial carpet of floor except the spinal accessory nerve. Spinal accessory nerve lies just underneath the roof. So the spinal accessory nerve is appreciated just underneath the roof.
so spinal accessory or 11th cranial nerve the spinal accessory nerve may be damaged in operations involving uh, removal or biopsy of lymph nodes so we can see several lymph nodes along the uh, sternocleidomastoid muscle so we know spinal accessory nerve supplies sternocleidomastoid and trapezius as well so the spinal accessory nerve may be damaged in operations involving the removal or biopsy of these lymph nodes in the posterior triangle of neck so the point at the junction of upper uh, middle third of posterior border of sternocleidomastoid where four cutaneous nerves and spinal accessory nerve emerge it is termed as nerve point of the neck so this point where we can see the several cutaneous nerves that is this is lesser occipital nerve this is greater auricular nerve and we can see the transverse cervical nerve and we can also appreciate supraclavicular nerves so these are the cutaneous nerves and along with it we can see the spinal uh, accessory nerve so they all emerge at a point and this point is called nerve point of the neck and in the cervical nerve block the anesthetic agent is injected at this site brachial plexus block the brachial plexus in the posterior triangle is located below the line extending from the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid that is at the level of uh, cricoid cartilage so here is the posterior border we can see the brachial plexus peeping into the posterior triangle so these are the trunks of the brachial plexus so in brachial plexus block this point is chosen that is along the posterior border of the sternocleidomastoid just uh, at the level of cricoid cartilage uh, where uh, to the midpoint of superior aspect of clavicle so this is the midpoint of superior aspect of clavicle so the anywhere in between is the brachial plexus trunk in this region the brachial plexus can be blocked by the injection of local anesthetic uh, between the first rib and the skin below the clavicle so the needle is inserted at the vertebral level that is at the c6 vertebral level uh, into an interscalene groove between scalenus anterior and scalenus medius the interscalene groove is formed between anterior and middle scalene muscles so using the cricoid cartilage as a landmark and also the c6 vertebral level and the sternocleidomastoid so all these three things considered as the landmarks to give brachial plexus block so brachial plexus block is sometimes done to perform the surgical procedures in the upper limb next feeling for the pulsations of subclavian artery a subclavian artery pulsations can be felt at the root of the neck by pressing uh, behind the clavicle at the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid the hemorrhage from the arteries of the upper limb can be stopped by pressing the subclavian artery onto the first rib uh, lateral to the uh, lower end of sternocleidomastoid muscle so the hemorrhage can be stopped uh, or it can be uh, reduced by applying a pressure that is over the subclavian artery in the subclavian triangle which lies uh, onto the first strip so the subclavian artery is pressed against the first strip lateral to the lower end of sternocleidomastoid muscle so this is the lateral end of sternocleidomastoid subclavian artery is located here the subclavian artery can be blocked in the first strip in the sub supraclavicular triangle or subclavian triangle add image here swelling in the posterior triangle uh, the most common cause of swelling in the posterior triangle is due to enlargement of lymph nodes uh, the supraclavicular lymph nodes are commonly involved and enlarged in tuberculosis or uh, hodgkin's lymphoma and that is the cancer of lymphatic system and malignant growth of breast arm and chest so the left supraclavicular lymph nodes are called as virtuous lymph nodes which are commonly involved in metastasis from cancer stomach so that is the importance of supraclavicular lymph nodes 
So not only in uh, cancer stomach, the metastasis can be due to cancer of uh, testis and the cancer of other abdominal organs as well. So the biopsy of these lymph nodes is helpful to early diagnosis of distant uh, malignancies. So that is the clinical importance of supraclavicular lymph nodes. So with this we wind up the posterior triangle of neck. I hope uh, I made this topic easier for you. Thank you.